Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. It is just me and James today. Uh, Benji can't make it. Um, I think he's just still upset over the events of today. Uh, we didn't get to see the Afghanistan-New Zealand game that we wanted to see. Uh, and we kind of jinxed it yesterday by predicting that England would beat Thailand, which they didn't. However, there's quite a lot to get out from this game, I would argue, having watched it all. And um, James, let's go to you to start with, to think about um, the Irish innings, because they batted first. They did bat first. And I've got to say, credit does go to Ireland. They played well. Um, credit has to go away from England in the first 10 overs who bowled like idiots. Um, mm. It was it was a very, very average performance. In fact, no, it's not average because you expect them to do better. It was a below par um, performance from England's bowlers in that first 10 overs. Um, and they said themselves they were really kind of disappointed with themselves and they should be um, because... Yeah, they were bowling far too short, far too often. Um, and yeah, allowing a, quite a lot of easy runs to go when, you know, it was very evident in the Irish bowling innings that the conditions were favourable to bowlers. And so 157 all out actually turned out to be an incredibly competitive score. Um, so... From that point of view, absolute credit goes to Ireland's batsmen for capitalising on it, um, particularly Andy Balburnie, proper captain's mm. knock of 62. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't blown away by any single um, individual performance. Um, it's always good to see Liam Livingston bowl well, and he did. Um, and Ben Stokes as well, very economical. Yeah, it seems to be the the theme, isn't it, with Ben Stokes to open the bowling. That's kind of the role he's he's been given. Um, Maybe as kind of like a a better batting version of David Willey in that he opens the bowling, gets the ball to swing to try and nip a few out early. But I think you're right, England did bowl too short. And when you look at the island innings and most of the way through the England innings, due to the conditions and the pitch, it was a very green pitch. The ball was moving. It was seeming, it was swinging. And if you look at England's bowling lineup, if the ball's swinging, you don't want Chris, Chris work should not be going over 13 and over when the ball's swinging like that. And when it's seamer friendly conditions, Sam Curran, again, very good with this, with the swinging ball and Ben Stokes as well. So those three together should have bowled a lot better at the start. I completely agree with you. Um, and I think it showed in the last 10 overs. Uh, the way England bowled in the last 10 overs was completely different to the first 10 overs. I think Ireland were 92 for one after the first 10 overs and they finished on 157 all out, which showed that England really turned it turned it around. And if they'd bowled like that the whole of the 20 overs, then Ireland probably would have only lasted 12 overs, 13 overs maybe, I don't know. It's, it's all um, yeah. speculation. However, Ireland... At the start, Andy Balburnie played the captain's knock, set up the target for England, and um, England didn't really help themselves with that either. No, so it's another story of England not being able to get off to a good start. Um, you know, it's been bad. It's, it's been a shame to see Hales in the last couple mm. of games just, like, do exactly the same thing. He's just skying them, and it's not been impressive. Um uh David Milan, it was kind of like watching um what's his face? Uh Aaron Finch. Oh yeah. Again. Like it it was just a painful innings that he was in for far too long. Um and when when DLS is on the horizon, when the rain's coming in and you know it's gonna come in, you need to start batting with some impetus and mm. he just couldn't hit it off the square. And ultimately, that cost England. Um, but the main thing that I want to focus on, because England's batsmen, you know, we can say this from an English standpoint, um, and you know, we'll go on to it in a minute, but Irish bowlers, I was very, very impressed. They were hooping it the whole way, way into the 13th over. It was swinging. 
Um, they were using the conditions perfectly. They were bowling that full length, which w- was what they kind of learned from England. Um, mm-hmm. And I was super impressed. What did you think? Yeah, incredibly impressed, um, especially Josh Little. Uh, I think um, I was watching one of the videos from uh, Jared Kimber, and he was saying that there are a lot of sides a lot better than Ireland who would love to have Josh Little in their team. And you can definitely see it because he provides the control. He's very accurate um, and he provides early, early swing and he just picks up wickets. He's a natural wicket taker who doesn't go for many runs. And that's exactly what you want in a 2020 international match. Um, And the rest of them kind of followed suit in terms of just bowling accurately, not giving anything away. And as much as I really enjoy watching Mark Wood bowl fast, um, it can be ineffective sometimes and he can leak runs. Whereas the Island bowling, watching that, I was like, they're not leaking any runs. They're playing really effectively and it's going to take some really good hitting from England to get over the line uh, on a good bowling pitch. I do want to mention um, Fionn Hanswicky. He's only playing his third international match and he bowled Ben Stokes' second ball with mm. an absolute beauty. Um, it, it was a, it was a really, really yeah. Good going round the wicket, pitching and straightening and hitting the stumps, and I think that would have troubled a lot of batsmen. Um, however, saying that, I do think that if Ben Stokes was playing a slog into the leg side, he probably would have connected and got a few. Uh, it's one of those situations where when you're out, you're like, oh, I wish I'd just had a go and yeah. tried because that's the best way to to play against those deliveries, and maybe that's an issue with England's batting. Maybe they were looking to be a bit too conservative. Um, However, it's hard to, it's hard to judge, isn't it? It Um, is. And one thing I want to talk about is the fact that England went so conservative. Um, And so they were on 111 for five after 14.3 when the rain kicked in. 105. Sorry, 105. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it was, it was poised to the point where Liam Livingston was in, Moeen Ali was on 24 off 12, mm. um, and we had Sam Curran and Chris Wokes, uh, Mark Wood and Adil Rashid still in the shed. Now, Duckworth Lewis is what we've got. That's, that's the best thing that the sport can provide because it is a sport that can't run as soon as it starts raining. Um, it becomes mm. dangerous for players and the ball doesn't bounce as much. Like it's, it's the issue we've got with a non-bouncy ball on the on grass. <laughs> it, yep. It's uh, it's kind of the, the thing we're stuck with. But um, that being said, in any situation in a T20, when there are you know six overs left, and all you need is another fifty runs, that no longer like at the start of t20 that'd be like yeah bowling team got it in the bag now you would expect the batting team to get that and looking at it looking at the momentum shift just before the rain hit i was very comfortable as an england fan i was thinking yeah this is fine we've thrown away some wickets we haven't batted very well i'm in the bowling Mm. very well but i'm very confident and then the rain came so that sucked. However, that being said, um, I definitely don't want it to come across like I'm just a bitter England fan and saying, oh, well, if the rain hadn't come, we'd have won. Because yeah. I think Ireland completely deserved that victory. And if they had lost that game, I think that would have been an injustice. Um, because the England players need to know that they can't play that terrible bowling effort in the first 10 overs and get away with it every time. Mm. Now, I'm disappointed, but I think we can bounce back and I think we will bounce back. The batting hasn't quite come off yet in the actual tournament, but I'm excited for the game against Australia. How's it going to go? The game against Australia? Oh, wow. The game against Australia, Um... yeah. I, I think it all depends on the batting. Australia have had a bit of a resurgence given their last game victory against Sri Lanka, especially with Marcus Stoinis. Watch that video on that. Um, and However, England still have a very good side. And I think if England's batters bounce back from this, then we'll see a much 
more well a much different um approach from england uh, and it, and maybe see a bit more confidence i think i think that's been lacking the last few games mm. um i hope england win um I, but you never know with australia do you um before the tournament england annihilated them in a tournament it's a completely different story um so yeah it'll be it will be interesting to see that game and see what happens um i just think that david milan He's he scored slowly the last few games. He's kind of played the anchor role. You can still play an anchor role and still play the way that that he normally plays, which is to hit over the top in the power play, and then when the field spread, milk it for ones and twos with the odd boundary. And I think that's what we're not seeing. And I don't know if bowlers are bowling well to him, and Australia will have a plan for him. But I think David Milan could be the difference. Um, what about you? What do you think? I game? I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think. If David Milan, if one of the top three fires, that's mm. that's going to make all the difference because we've got a good middle order and they yeah. tend to be able to claw it back a bit. Um, it's been a shame that Harry Brook hasn't managed to do anything yet, really. Yeah, that's um, no. Because if you look at that England team, you've got a team of match winners and then you've got Harry Brook there that hasn't... He's, he's, he's obviously shown a hell of a lot of promise in the games that he's yeah. played, but he hasn't won a match yet. And he hasn't played well in this tournament yet. So I'm excited for that because I think it's going to happen, maybe against Australia. Um, now, looking to tomorrow, we've got a triple header, hopefully not rain affected because that will suck. Um, so we've got just, I'm, all I'm asking for is a prediction. Okay, who's winning? Bangladesh versus South Africa. South Africa. Bangladesh. Wow. I know. Big choice. Uh, big, big choice, big call, but it's it's my call. Okay. Um India versus the Netherlands. India. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go for India as well. I yeah. think it's a pretty safe bet. Um Pakistan versus Zimbabwe. Pakistan. I also think Pakistan will win, but I think it could be close. Oh, yeah, I think that would be the closest of all three games. Mm. Um, I think South Africa will easily win tomorrow. Um, given Quinton de Kock's performance at the end against uh, Zimbabwe, he looks in full flow. Um, David Miller in the middle order is just, yeah, and they're fast bowlers as well. Um, I don't see I don't see Bangladesh winning against that. Um, I don't know. I, I guess the, the thing with this tournament is you think Australia World Cup, is going to be fast, hard, bouncy pitches. And instead, you've got the England team wishing they'd brought Darren Stevens and their other 60 mile per hour swing bowlers. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But I, I think it is, is showing that, that at the moment, and I, I'd be interested to get your opinion on this, at the moment in 2020 cricket, you've got teams like Ireland and the Netherlands and Zimbabwe who you can think they could actually do all right in these games and i think what we're seeing is that teams like ireland are getting closer um it's not england played average today and usually the way they would have played would have beaten a team like ireland quite comfortably still playing average whereas ireland are winning those games when england are playing average and i think that we saw that in the first round with scotland beating west indies um and sri lanka teams like that are are looking okay and it's it's good for cricket i think yeah, I think um, it's it's nations where you see the there is an upward trajectory of growth in cricket um, because like Netherlands, Ireland, Scotland, they're all teams that they haven't had a peak yet. No. They haven't had their high point of cricket really, and I think that is that is coming. It's growing and it's exciting to see, especially. I think Irish and Scottish cricket is is something that could be really quite special. Um, whereas if I contrast that, um, and I, it makes me sad to think about it, with West Indies, where the, the direction of cricket doesn't look clear and it doesn't no. look like it's going up. Not at um, all. It looks like cricket's really struggling there. Mm. Like test cricket isn't doing very well. And then the white ball stuff, which is what was making kind of all the money and what was driving it forward, 
that now seems like it's in jeopardy as well. Um, and there's no kind of desire to play for West Indies from the players. So it must be some sort of toxic culture, some lack of drive there. So yeah. the difference yeah, is tough. quite big. And for those play for those teams where it's growing, the sky's the limit and yeah, all power awesome. to Ireland. Um yeah. deserve the win. Full full leprechaun day. Um luck of the Irish. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> Should we Bye. go on to the cricket nurse questions that we've had? Um because yes, we, we always love answering these. We uh, do. So make sure you leave them in the comments because upward trajectories, as James has been saying, that's us. We're on a upward tra- trajectory. I hate saying that word, but never mind. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so PD, um, who is close to James's heart, he is says, actually casual question first. Have you all umpired any full matches? If yes, did you ever face any situation where both the batting side and bowling side are mad at you? Now, I have. I've never umpired a full match. However, I have umpired when there hasn't been a, a an official umpire given to the game, and there have been a few times when. Uh, the batting side or the bowling side or my own team has been mad at me um, for certain things. And I think it's it's really hard as an umpire because umpires who are international umpires make mistakes all the time and they've had intense training on it. Um, but there are so many just tiny calls where it could go either the batsman's way or the bowling's, bowler's way. And it's, yeah, it's hard to make those calls. And if you make it in one person's favour, the other team is going to be annoyed at that. So... Yeah, I've had that. What about you, James? Yeah, I've done a little bit of umpiring here and there. Again, never a never a full match. Um, no. Prefer to be playing, but yeah. uh, I don't think I've had any situations where everybody's been angry with me. But definitely had situations where at least one side has been very unhappy. Okay. Um, uh, I'm. I tend to be give give the benefit of the doubt to the batsman generally just because we don't play at that higher level. So, you know, mm. I, I tend to think I don't want to ruin somebody's day. And yeah. I'd, I'd, you know, bowl, bowler can at least get him out a proper way, not just LBW yeah. or something. So we, that's that's where I'm at. We're but missing that kind Benji of for this on, question. Doesn't... Sorry? I'm just saying we're missing Benji on this question because there we has are, been well, a time I... <laughs> that I've got mad at Benji, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, uh, yeah go for it. <laughs> yeah, so this the, the second part to this question is, um, do you play your regular matches with the LBW rule? If yes, how decent are the umpires? Um, so we both do both play with the LBW rule and um, the umpires aren't usually that great. <laughs> um, the standard we play, it tends to be, it's quite often like some old bloke that then has some 30 year old screaming at his face and you know, just raises his finger because he's terrified. Or yeah. it ends up being Benji, who um, in a match we once played, uh, he, he got me and Zach in as ringers. So we weren't, we, we didn't even play for the team. Doing him a favour, Zach makes the long trip out, opens the batting, and uh, was it first ball? Benji first triggers ball. you, Triggered LBW, me. which... Yeah was shocking and then he gave me out run out i was well in my ground let let yeah. let the let the record show we we did actually talk about this in a video in the past so if you manage to find that video if you're still watching so far go on that video and comment benji can't umpire <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what? if you've listened this far in in this video please just put in the comments a hashtag benji can't umpire that's that's what we want to see in life lovely but thanks very much for the question, PD. Um, again, leave your que- questions down below because we do really appreciate them. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow after the big games that go on. Hopefully not rain affected. Mm. Check out our socials. It is in the uh, link tree in the description. You can uh, like and subscribe. Please tell your friends. It's tell free. Your, it's free. You can always undo it. If you hate mm-hmm. us, um, yeah. you can tell your auntie, tell your uncle and tell your dog.
subscribe to the cricket nerds we'll see you guys soon goodbye